Welcome back to the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. So let's take a look at the history of the Shih Tzu. They originated from Tibet and for thousands of years were highly prized by Tibetan monks. They were kept in monasteries because of they were known to be loyal and trustworthy companions as well as extremely good watchdogs. From time to time they were sent as gifts to Chinese emperors where they were kept in the imperial palace. They were originally known as Tibetan lion dogs and it's believed that when they were gifted to the Chinese they were then bred with Chinese breeds including the Pekingese and the Chinese pug. These crossings gave the Shih Tzu their unique look making them that much different in appearance to the Tibetan lion dogs as we now know as the Lhasa Apso. They made their way to Europe around the time of the First World War and arrived in the UK in the late 1920s. They were finally recognised by the UK Kennel Club in 1949 but had to wait another 20 years to arrive across the Atlantic and be recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1969. To give it their full name, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a dog with an interesting background. Historians believe that the Corgi is descended from Valhuns, who were Swedish cattle dogs that were brought to Wales by the Vikings in the 9th and 10th centuries. Whilst others have believed them to be descended from dogs that were brought to Wales by Flemish weavers in the 12th century. The exact origin remains debated and still unknown. The UK Kennel Club first recognised corgis as purebred dogs in the 1920s. They were officially known as the Welsh corgis when exhibited for the first time in 1925. There were two recognised breeds of Welsh corgi, the Pembroke and the Cardigan. At that time they were recognised by the UK Kennel Club, both Pembrokes and Cardigans were shown in the same class as one breed. Over a decade later, in 1934, both the UK and American Kennel Club recognised the Pembroke and the Cardigan as two separate breeds. When we think of a Corgi today, most people think of the Pembrokes, as they have slowly gained in popularity in the United States of America and today have cracked the top 10 50 most popular dog breeds. But one of the main reasons they've become so popular and well-known is because of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who received her first Pembroke Welsh Corgi from her father, King George, in 1933. After falling in love with the first Corgi as a young girl, the Queen went on to breed and own over 30 Corgis in her life. Standing between 9 and 10 and a half inches tall at the withers and weighing anywhere from 9 to 16 pounds, the Shih Tzu is certainly a small breed. However, they are incredibly sturdy. They're said to have a chrysanthemum face and their heads are broad and round with a lot of space between their eyes. They also have a nice beard and full whiskers with their hair grown upright on their muzzles, hence the chrysanthemum appearance. They're famous for their long show coats and top knot that have kept their hair out of their eyes for years. The Shih Tzu comes in many different colours of coats and any colour is acceptable except male. Corgis are also described as being quite sturdy and athletic despite their small size. They're quite long for their height, in fact they're probably twice as long as they are tall. They have pricked ears and a pointy muzzle and features that have been described as fox-like. Despite their bodies being low, they're strong and sturdily built which allows them to still be active. They were originally built for herding as they're naturally athletic dogs. Corgis have a medium length dense double coat. This means that their coats are double coated with a thick undercoat covered by a top uh, covered on top by another layer of longer weather resistant guard hairs. Their coats come in different colours like red, sable, fawn or tricoloured which is a combination of red, black and tan. They usually have white markings on their neck, chest, belly and muzzles. They typically stand between 10 and 12 inches tall at the shoulder and should weigh no more than 30 pounds. Shih Tzus are lively, confident and outgoing little characters. They love nothing more than being a part of a family and being involved in everything that goes on in a household. For these reasons they continue to be a popular choice as family pets and companion dogs. They adore human contact and are their most happy when they're around people that they love. They're a great first choice for first time owners because they're intelligent and will always be willing and eager to please. Shih Tzus can be wary and suspicious of strangers, although they rarely show any sort of aggressive behaviour towards strangers. Instead, they prefer to just keep their distance until they're comfortable. They have a low to moderate energy level and do require routine physical exercise, but they also need to be mentally stimulated. 
As we previously mentioned, Shih Tzus are intelligent, but they also have an independent side to their characters, which means their training and socialization must start as early as possible. They can also be a little stubborn at times, so it's important to bear in mind that a lot of patience and consistency are needed when training and socializing them. When having a corgi, it's important to know that they're strong individuals with a mind of their own. They were originally used for herding, but became popular family companions due to their trustworthy, loyal nature and desire to please their owners. They're known for being happy, loving and intelligent, but at times they can also be stubborn or independent. They are easy to train, but don't expect them to always do as they're told, as they like to think for themselves. Although they want to please their owners, food is a big motivator when training them. Corgis also make good watchdogs. They're naturally suspicious of strangers and will be quick to bark if they feel something or someone is threatening their home or family. Like every dog, the corgi needs to be socialised at an early age. You should expose them to as many different people, sights, sounds and experiences. Socialisation helps to ensure that your corgi puppy grows up to be a well-mannered family companion. The Shih Tzu is known as a friendly and affectionate dog, but they're not always the best choice for families with very young children. With small children, they can often feel threatened due to their boisterous and unpredictability. This can cause them to be a bit nippy if they feel threatened in any way. With this said, if a Shih Tzu has grown up with, the, with kids and they have been socialised well from a young age, they can get along well with young children, but it's equally important to teach children how to behave around them and how to respect them and their space. As we've always said though, any interaction between children and dogs should be supervised by an adult to make sure things don't get too boisterous. Shih Tzus get along great with other pets in the home if they've grown up with them as they're social by nature. Just be cautious when introducing them to new dogs or other animals as they can be quite feisty. Corgis are great around children but thanks to their herding instincts they sometimes nip at children's feet or ankles, especially younger children. Corgis are, however, keen to learn and this behaviour can be trained out of them from a young age. As you should with any breed, please make sure you also take the time to teach children how to approach and touch your corgi and not to approach them if they're eating or sleeping. They're probably better suited to families with older children. They usually are good with other pets in the household as long as they've been well socialised. If they're not socialised, they can be a little aggressive around other dogs. They get on well with cats if they've grown up with them, but they will happily chase off and scare cats or small animals they do not know. The Shih Tzu and the Corgi are both small dogs with large personalities. Both are small and sturdy and love to please their owners. They require a small amount of exercise and love to cuddle in the lap of their owner. Both get on well with children when socialised well, but be cautious with them if you are a family with young children. They are both small in stature, but either would make a big addition to your family home.